Hi, PNG Assassin here. I just wanted to give you a tutorial on how to use OpenFiler with VirtualBox. So in VirtualBox, you want to create a new machine. Stay at uh, OpenFiler. It's going to be a Linux machine. Mm, let's just be safe and say other Linux. Uh, I already made a machine, so I'll just say OpenFiler 1. It doesn't need much RAM, so let's do that. We're not going to add a hard drive because we're going to download one from uh, SourceForge. So create, continue, and uh, in your open filer, virtual machine, go to settings, uh, audio. I just like to turn audio off and network. Uh, you want to change the attach to, instead of not, have bridged adapter. This is so your host machine can connect to your open file or web GUI. And then in OK, then we can just click OK. So now we gotta go download the virtual VMware VMDK, which does work with VirtualBox. So I'll put the link in the description. Just download this. It'll download to wherever you need it. Mine downloads to the desktop. Then you can unzip the gzip then the tar into a folder and it'll create a folder from this folder you can do uh, right click it and copy and go to wherever your uh, virtual machines are uh, mine actually happens to be on my F drive and VirtualBox VMs then open filer one right click and click paste You can click close, close that window. Then go back to VirtualBox, right click uh, Open Filer, Settings. Then you want to go to Storage and uh, click this blue, darker blue icon. And we're going to choose an existing disk. Then I'm going to navigate where my virtual VMs are or wherever I pasted that. You can also just do it from the Downloads folder, but I like keeping two copies in case I mess something up. So then open filer one for my instance. And then click the uh, click just this, this file. So this is the hard drive we're gonna boot off of. This one has a pre-installed open filer for virtual machines. Then we're also gonna create a new hard disk. Just VDI is fine, dynamic. Let's do uh, 10 gigs. Create. So then now that our hard drives are all set up, we can click OK. And now uh, click Start. And just boot off from the hard drive. Now you see that IP right here, Web Administration GUI. This this address right here, you're going to type that into your host machine's web browser. So I'll just go to Firefox, type in HTTPS 192.168.1.12, and it's going to be a 446 address instead of a 443 on HTTPS. And just click Enter. Uh, you'll get an untrusted connection because it's SSL without a certificate. Just say an understand or whatever web browser you're in. Confirm. Username. The username is open filer. And the password is just password. Just click login. So from here, this is just a basic uh, setup of your machine, just a summary or, or a status rather. Shows my processor, etc. etc. And see IDE devices. See that hard disk? That's the hard disk we added. And this is the one we downloaded. So now go to volumes. And we're going to create a new physical volume. We're going to create it off this 10 gigabyte one, not this HDA one, HDB. Scroll down and we're going to create a RAID actually. We're going to create a RAID, let's create a RAID 0. So I need uh, two hard disks, so let's just divide that by two and that's 
10.04.10.402. Then we're going to create. Make sure this partition type is RAID array member. Create. And we're going to do the same thing to the rest of the cylinders. And click create. If you don't want to create a RAID array, you can just create a normal physical volume and just use all the cylinders. This is to format the hard drive, basically. So uh, then over here on the volume section, click uh, software RAID. And we're going to do a RAID 0, so it describes how many devices you need. So let's just click each checkbox and click add array. And now we created a RAID. So then, and that's also in a volume group. Well, it should should have been. Let's just create a volume group. Let's say RAID. And we're going to select this hard drive, this ND0, add volume group. So now it's part of a volume group also. So now we are on the volume group of RAID. And uh, when, well, you click volume after that, then you do add volume. For add volume, let's just say share, share, required space. Uh, let's just have 192, just real short. And for the file system volume type, click iSCSI. Now click create. So now we just created a, a vol or like a partition on the volume RAID from the RAID controller MD0 named share. And on the right side again we're going to go to iSCSI targets and see how it's not enabled yet. We got to go to services in the top and let's enable uh, iSCSI target server and uh, enable both. So now we go back to, don't click this iSCSI target setup, we got to go back to volumes and if you had more than one volume group you'd probably have to change this and do iSCSI targets and we're going to click add and then once you click add go to LUN mapping and see the share share dev raid share that's the one we just created off the raid drive the raid volume and the share uh, partition it's going to be write through and block input output and map and then on your host machine, just search uh, iSCSI initiator. It should pop up right away. And that's for my old one. Just disconnect from that. Maybe. But uh, sometimes this network ACL doesn't work. So you have to go to. Uh, local networks from here, from this little iSCSI targets, network ACL, or you can do uh, system and add a network address configuration. I might have to do that, so I'll just do that later if I need to. Alright, well, iSCSI initiator doesn't want to work. Let's just end that task. Here we go. iSCSI initiator. We're going to do a quick connect. And this is the IP of our open filer server. So let's just quick connect that. Done. I'm going to refresh this. Yeah, for some reason, it's still wanting to use my old my old uh, iSCSI I just created. So, discovery, let's delete that. Or not. So it's going to freeze again, probably. Alright, so this quick connect just adds the discovery option. So then, volumes and devices. We can see that this appeared. So, for some reason, you don't need this network access control list. So then, do a uh, this is the hard drive that I just shared. So let's just click. Uh, well, this makes sure it's like available to my Windows host. So right click, go to start, 
right click computer and manage and go to uh, disk management and from disk management if this doesn't this initialized disk doesn't pop up just scroll down and see just see this disk 3 and see how we created on 192 and just do uh, right click uh, the disk 3 in the m middle pane I guess not the box pane but then uh, right click it initialize the disk we want to initialize disk 3 as MBR master boot record and then you can create a like a raid from iSCSI but I just have one disk so right click that use simple volume next uh, next H sure why not next NTFS fat whatever you want new volume let's say uh, share we're gonna perform a quick format next and finish so now that we just formatted it the share H now it looks just like another hard drive on our computer as you can see just H new hard drive we can create files do whatever we want look at that so then that's about it and if you want to If you want to uh, just disconnect from your iSCSI, you can just click remove. So that's about it. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a good day.